Hi, and welcome to Module 3 on Variables and Constants and Levels of Measurement. Now, in the first two modules, we talked about numbers and then sets in general, and those are important, but let's take a step back now and, and try to ask the question again, why are they important? In the first module, we talked about counting. And counting is important because it helps us understand things, right? So if you want to know the number of war deaths in a country during a civil war, you can count the number of deaths. If you want to know um, net immigration factors, you can count the number of people in and out of a country, and so on. If you want to know how much money a country is producing, you can look at GDP and count money effectively. More generally, we want to understand quantitatively, using numbers, things in the world. So how do we do that? We do that by creating things we call variables and constants. Now, constant and variable. Now, I would generally not write these words on, on the um, slides, primarily because I assume you have, you have the book, just because it's too hard to write everything on, on slides. For instance, at various times in this course, I'll use Greek letters. There's a Greek letter table on page 21 of the book. Um, you can also find this online and everywhere. Um, it's a table of Greek letters. If you're not familiar with these, um, you can look at here or go online to find the Greek letters. I'm not going to put that up on a slide because it's going to flash by pretty fast and I don't think it's very helpful for you. Um, so, um, but certain words I'll put on that are very important and constants and variables are very important. They're very similar. Each represents something about the world. Right? So a constant and a variable are both something that represents something about the world. GDP might Per, might be a variable or a constant in this case. Um, gender or location or language, survey responses, these are all constants and variables. These are all constants or variables depending on the context. These are representations of properties that objects have or their objects themselves. So, for instance, let's say I want to go out and measure the GDP of every country in the world to better understand their economic status. Well, I can create a variable known as GDP. Or let's say I want to count the number of mountains in North America to understand better geography. I could write a constant called mountains. Why is the first a variable and the second a constant? Well, typically, a variable is something that changes. It varies over time or space or in some fashion across the set of things you care about. Here, looking at GDP across countries, it's going to vary across countries, and typically, you care about that variation. A constant is something that does not vary in any way you care about. Right? So while the number of mountains might change on a geological scale <laughs> over time, right? mountains rise and fall, um, as plate shift, we generally don't care about that change in the time scale of human endeavors, of human actions. So we treat them as constants. A constant is a fixed variable. It's a fixed object that does not change as far as you care. A variable is something that does change as far as you care. And we typically represent these variables in abstract fashions, right? Writing GDP or mountains or whatever are pretty concrete. Um, ways to write these things, and sometimes we'll write them like that, but sometimes we'll treat them more generally. And typically, we'll treat variables using letters like x and y and z, and we'll treat constants using things like a, b, and c, but the actual letters don't matter. We can have variables that are a, b, and c, or constants that are x, y, and z. It doesn't make much of a difference. The point is we treat variables and constants with letters. Sometimes we'll use these aforementioned Greek letters. That's an alpha, that's a beta, that's a gamma. They're also capital Greek letters, but they're used less frequently, so we're not going to talk about them right now. Um, and if you're unfamiliar with the Greek letters, go to the table. The table again, tables are online or in the book, um, if you're unfamiliar with those. The ones most commonly used are alpha and beta and gamma, plus a few others. 
So these are variables and constants, and these are primarily what we care about most when we're doing math of any sort in political science or social sciences because they represent concepts of interest. Right? The GDP variable represents a concept of interest, the productivity of a nation. If you measure a survey response, a survey question could be a variable with different possible responses. It represents someone's perception about some topic. These are things we care about as social scientists. These variables represent those things. And that's why we care about understanding them and manipulating them and figuring out what their properties are. Um, so that's the major point here. Um, what we do in general is assign vari values to these variables. Sometimes we do that via observation. We observe a variable, and we write down the value of that variable and assign it to the variable. So the GDP of some country can be figured out by going to existing data and writing the number down from that data, those data. Um, or we do a survey to obtain information about a particular variable, if it's a survey question. Or we might do an experiment to obtain values for a particular variable. right? If you want to see how some people play some game, we can make them play that game in a laboratory setting or in a field setting and see what their answers are to that um, question, to the, to the game, and then write down their response to the game as the value of a variable. So for instance, more abstractly, there might be a value. So there might be a variable x, and that might equal 7 in some context. The equal sign is an assignment sign. It means x is equal to 7. It takes the value of 7. We're assigning 7 to x. It's also an equivalent sign. So here x is the same as 7 in this context, They're the same thing. If you do any kind of programming, Equivalence and assignment are often different um, notations. So, for instance, in programming, this means assign the value of 7 to x, whereas a double equals might mean x is the same as 7, and you can test that if. But in sort of typical math, um, the equals is an assignment and also an equivalent. On occasion, we will add a third line, which is an explicit assignment, or sorry, an explicit equivalence. X is, is the same, is defined as being 7. We do this typically when we want to define something more complicated. So if you see three lines, it's a definition. They're defined to be the same thing instead of just being equal. Um, sometimes we might see X is not the same as 7, so we write X not equal to 7. Right, that's up here. And sometimes we might have x be more complicated variable. We'll deal with this in probability um, part of the class, of the course. Um, but for instance, if I write x is like that, I might be assigning x to be distributed according to some distribution, probability distribution. And again, don't worry about that now. That's in the probability part of the class. But there are other ways of assigning values to x besides just um, giving it particular values. This makes x a random variable. But again, don't worry about that right now. Okay. Um, and going back to what we did before, we can assign x values from sets. And here's where we link the sets to the variables. x might be an element of a set containing values a, b, and c. Right. So if x is an element of the set 1, 3, and 5. It's a variable that can take the values 1, 3, or 5. And that's it. And here's how sets relate to what we've done be today, the variables. Um, variables take the, take the values of elements of the set from which they're part. So the GDP of a nation is an element of the real numbers, and so on. These variables are elements of sets. That has multiple levels of importance, some of which you'll do in later, cl in later classes as you go on in your studies. But just to really briefly go into what some of those, some of those levels of importance are, 
they help determine how you analyze data of the types of particular variables. If a variable takes values from a set whose elements cannot be ordered, so for instance, if you live in the north, south, east, or west, there's no natural order between north, south, east, and west, um, then your set of possible values for your variable are not able to be ordered, and we call your variable itself a nominal variable. Nominal. A nominal variable is one in which the elements cannot be ordered. That's nominal. And that has certain properties for how you analyze it. For instance, um, you can't ask questions about which is bigger than the other one because there is no bigger. Right? North and west, there's no bigger or smaller there. Um, you might also have elements of a set in which they're categorical, like the example we just did, but you actually can order them. So you might have a survey question that says, how many times a week um, do you go to church? And it might be 0, or between 1 and 3, or between 4 and 6, or 6 or greater. So there's four possible categories there you could answer. And your answer falls in one of those categories. And you can order the categories, right? 6 plus is bigger than 1 to 3. We call this kind of variable an ordinal variable. And this also has consequences for how you analyze it that you'll learn in your statistics classes. Um, so the set of values that the variable can take helps direct dictate how you analyze the variable when you analyze um, quantitatively. Ordinal variables have orders. So you can say what's bigger or smaller. But you can't say how much bigger, how much smaller. Right? How much bigger is 6 plus than 0? 6 plus could be 1,000. It could be 7. Right? You can't actually say how much bigger it is than 0. There are also types called interval and ratio. Um, so if you have actual real numbers, right? these are interval or ratio. Technically, interval is typically, um, not always, but typically an integer type of variable, whereas ratio typically is variables that have a, a concrete zero. This distinction you may or may not care about when you get the statistics. But by and large, for interval and ratio variables, you can deal with how much bigger and how much smaller these variables are. They're non-categorical. They're actually numbers. And again, these have consequences for how you analyze them. We're not going to talk any more about that in this class. But this just gives you a, a sense of how the type of set from which a variable is drawn can dictate how you analyze the variable later. And again, you do that more in your statistics classes. Okay, so that's it for this one. Next time, we're going to be talking about operators. Thank you.